Burma's tentative steps towards democratic reform are already reaping rewards, but the country's ethnic minorities say that for them, little has changed. Thousands of them have fled Burma for India. The ABC's Richard Lindell reports from a refugee camp in New Delhi. Hundreds of Muslim Burmese asylum seekers, known as Rohingyas, are camping and protesting outside the UN's refugee agency in New Delhi. I want to ask why refugees from other countries get facilities, but why we, the Burmese refugees, do not. The people here are desperate, the conditions miserable. There's no clean water or sanitation, and they subsist among the flies and rubbish. The Rohingyas were rendered stateless by Burma's military junta 30 years ago. Some have come to India to escape the regime and carry with them stories of rape, torture and abuse. Mothers and sisters have to endure atrocities from the military junta. We're not safe there. When our kids walk to school, the military simply pick them off the streets to work as forced labour. The UNHCR has registered 1,800 Rohingyas as asylum seekers in India. Hundreds of thousands more have fled to Bangladesh over the past three decades, where they live in abject poverty. They're almost a forgotten people. So unless there is substantial international pressure, the liberalisation that has taken place because of Aung Su Suu Kyi is because of her following and her reputation. But the Rohingyas have no charismatic leader like that. The US, Australia and others are now easing sanctions on Burma, a reward for progress towards democratic reform. But the Rohingyas here say that sanctions relief should be tied to human rights and citizenship for their people in Burma. Otherwise, they fear being condemned to a future as stateless people, without rights and any hope of returning home. Richard Lindell, ABC News, New Delhi.